Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time. Disclaimer, this is not a tutorial. This is Sat Chat. We talk on Saturdays. We chat, if you will. Saturday, Chatterday. So if you are here looking for a tutorial, or if you're new to the channel, this is probably not the video to start out on. You want to start out on a tutorial, nice juicy watercolor painting tutorial, or card making tutorial, or something. This is just me chatting about stuff for about 28 minutes. So now that that's out of the way, <laughs> <laughs> so no nasty comments saying, I put this channel on to watch a tutorial. This ain't it, honey. You gotta go look at the other videos. Um, so I'm back from New York. I got back um, Saturday, late Saturday afternoon last week and um, had a good time. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but first, let's see. First, oh, first, I want to let you know if you are a Critique Club member, this project is now up in Critique Club. These mushrooms here, hopefully, I'll turn that down a little bit. Is that... Does that show up a little bit better? Uh, pan pastel and watercolor crayon on a sand, on a gessoed mat board, and there'll be a time lapse for that on Sunday. So if you want to um, if you want to check that out, that'll be up on Sunday on YouTube, or you can get the real time tutorial. It's about two hours long, so it is a longer one uh, in Critique Club, and I'll have a link to that in the video description. Next week, I'm going to be doing a live stream on this owl. So if you want to check that out. Um, I will, that's going to be next Wednesday. So I just want to give you a heads up, next Wednesday I'm going to have a live stream of this. It will probably be around noontime, Eastern time, um, but there will be a replay available afterwards. I just wanted to let you know in case you wanted to try to catch it. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, and I'll just share something fun that I painted. I had a crafty, uh, crafty craft night, crafty craft night with some of my friends last night and I just painted this little uh, loon while we were, while we were just kind of chit-chatting and, and uh, we all just do our own thing, you know, something creative, whatever, it doesn't matter, you just, or even just hang out and chat, it doesn't, that's, that's how craft night goes, <laughs> that's how craft night do. Uh, <clears throat> so I thought that was kind of cute, and uh, maybe I'll do a tutorial on it sometime, or a live stream, I don't know, but I was getting ready to review the Arteza Round watercolor paper, so I've got like, I've got three full paintings done on it and one just kind of experimental piece and then I think I'm going to film a demo uh, on that paper when I do the review because it's like otherwise it's like here's some paper it's good and this end of video there spoiler alert there's the review <laughs> so uh, I think it's helpful to kind of see the paint go on it as far as I usually don't do paper reviews because it's kind of like not that visually interesting. I've wanted to do like a paper comparison, but it's like I cannot figure out how to make it visually interesting. So uh, I think a spreadsheet is more the way to go with like, but then again, the paper change and it, especially these last couple of years, you know, you get in, you fall in love with a particular product and then you can't find it or it sells out or the company gets sold. And it's just like, it's really difficult to keep stuff like that updated video format wise. So probably a, a spreadsheet would be a better I don't know if I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm not, I shouldn't even say that out loud because somebody will be like, yes, do that. I'll be like, oh, what have I gotten myself into? But anyway, um, let me see. I have, oh, oh, if you've been looking to pick up one of my full length standalone courses, I have a sale running from now until a couple days after St. Patrick's Day. Um, I haven't done a sale since like last fall. So 40% off. The coupon code is lucky you 22 I'll put it in the video description so you can put that in the uh, in the coupon box on my teachable school and you can get 40% off any standalone course I've got like 12 uh, now I think of just like long courses so if you prefer that versus a subscription that is a great way to um, to save some money and and you have lifetime access to my standalone courses like critique club is five dollars a month and you pay five dollars a month to access everything in critique club but um, my standalone courses, you pay once and then you have a lifetime access. So it just depends on what you like. And that will take 40% off any of my standalone courses. So I'll put that info in the video description. Maybe I'll put coupon code links. We'll see how much time I have <laughs> to get the, the video description written. Today is kind of uh, kind of chock full, so um, well, we'll see. We'll see what I can do. If you if I don't get the I'll have the coupon code in there, and what you do is you add the class to your to your cart, and then when you go to check out, there's a Thing says add coupon you click on that and then you can paste in the coupon it's pretty much how it works on every website i guess oh have you heard of the internet and this thing called online shopping well here's how you do it 
Oh boy, what is it, 1999? Uh, let's see, so yes, I went to New York. It was a lot of fun. The folks at Derwent took great care of me. I was wined and dined and, uh, and it was just wonderful. It was wonderful because I am a nervous traveler. Um, I don't travel very often, um, so so that was nice. They arranged my travel, so I just had to get myself to the plane, and then after that, <laughs> they 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 found me and they collected me and they took me where I needed to go, which is which is great. Actually, uh, uh, one of the Derwent uh, uh, sales manager, uh, she landed at the same time or a little while after I did, so um, so we met up at the airport and took a cab over to the hotel and yeah, it was uh, it was really fun. It was um, the nice thing about riding. Uh, okay. Riding in a cab in New York is pretty terrifying. It reminds me of teaching my children to drive because when you are, uh, it's it's like you know the close calls that like when you're teaching somebody to drive, you're like oh, and you just think you're for sure gonna hit that other car, and that's like what every twist and turn, every that's what it feels like constantly. Like you were gonna hit somebody or something, and because of COVID, there's all these restaurants in the street. They're just in the street and there's like barely enough room for the cars as it is. And then they got plunk, there's a restaurant and you're driving like someone's there eating their linguine and you're like six inches away from these people eating their linguine. It's crazy. And uh, and they're like swerving and there's like one row, really there's space for one car. And somehow these other cars are like, like they just go, they go for it. They like the person behind me better stop because they're going. It's just crazy. I would just be like, I would be, I would be in tears if I had to drive and that I would just be having a nervous breakdown trying to make a left-hand turn. Although I think most of the streets are one way because a left-hand turn would just be impossible. It's um, it's a whole other thing. And we get there and we get out of the cab. No, are we waiting for a cab? Or no, we just got out of the cab, I think. And we just met um, the other folks on the Derwent team. And we're just standing there in front of the hotel. And this bike comes flying down the bike lane. It goes right into a cab's door. And she, like, flips off her bike. And it's just like... And she just got up and went back on her way like it happens every day. It was crazy. I'm just like, oh my word. I just, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, that is life in the fast lane. <laughs> I, mean, I could not go out for that. But had some good food, had some uh, good times. Um, it was a lot of work. I was... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not used to being around a lot of people and I was, I don't, I think my entire, my whole entire life, I think I was around more people in those three days in New York than I was my entire life. <laughs> it was crazy. Oh man. So like we're setting up for my class. I got there about an hour before the, the I was doing the make and take. So I had two tables of make and takes and there was another artist who was from Brooklyn who had, um, who had two, two tables and he was doing his project with them. And we really didn't know what to expect, but we got there early, we were setting up, and then the doors opened, and it was like a swarm. That's the only thing I could explain. I mean, it was just like people just started flooding in, and just like for a split second, I was like, I'm gonna, <laughs> don't freak out, you know, I'm just like, don't freak out, Lindsay. But I was just like, I haven't seen this many people ever, and they're all heading, charging right for me. Uh, it was a little crazy. Um, but everyone sat down and we didn't really know how we were going to do our classes. Um, so the other artist that was teaching, his name is Jedediah Dor, and uh, if you go into my Instagram account, you can see a picture of us at the show and you can check out his, um, his Instagram account if you like because he actually helped design the Derwent line and wash set. So his work is very like urban sketchy and uh, really cool. So, um, so it's super fun to see somebody doing different art. And he did kind of like a Matisse make and take project. and. So he was doing his, and I was doing mine, which was like, uh, we were doing bookmarks, and um, I did uh, the, the tutorial, I posted my tutorial on my YouTube channel that I was teaching at the Make and Take, so that way if any teachers wanted to check it out, they could find it if they didn't get a chance to finish it, or they just wanted to, they forgot the different techniques. Um, because it was really crazy how many people had never heard of Derwent ink tents. It's like, I bought my first set of Derwent ink tents like 10 years ago. It's like, you've never heard of that? And, uh, and oh my gosh, they were so cute. They were so excited about water brushes. It's like, they're like, what? There's water in the handle? What? You know, this is amazing. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're so cute. You've never seen a water brush. Oh, it's adorable. Um, but it's like, wow, you forget like when you're steeped in it, like I think a lot of us on YouTube, we're just steeped and we see all the products as they come out. We're always looking, we're always curious, we're nosy. We're so nosy here as YouTubers. We want to know what the new thing is. Um, but it was so cute. They're so innocent. Like, whoa, what is this? Ink tent? What? You can use it on fabric? And then some people had ink tents, but they didn't know you could use it on fabric. So they were so excited about that. Um, so it was just really fun to share and teach. And I think I, I think a thousand people cycled through my make and takes. It was pretty crazy. Um, 
every how many times it, <laughs> there's probably gonna be some drinking game where people are gonna take a shot every time I say crazy and by now you're on the floor with alcohol poisoning so sorry about that but um but yeah it was fun and uh yeah so the first day was just like it was a madhouse a madhouse <laughs> Planet of the Apes, man. Who got that? Um, it was a madhouse. And so the, the end of the day, we're just like, <laughs> me and the other artists just like, holy crap. And so we're talking about like, how are we gonna do this differently tomorrow? And first of all, we decided that we need to get, come here early so that we can see the place because we didn't get a chance to leave our tables except for maybe to like run to the bathroom. It was like insane. And I need to find like, <laughs> I need to find, um, uh, one of those things that you look up in thesauruses the synonyms, soon find synonyms for the word crazy here. Um, it was banana pants. So we, uh, we set up our, our stations for the next day so that we could come in early and then look around because like there were, there was a whole other floor of the convention hall with other vendors. Like Blick was the, like the gold sponsor. So they had the biggest, um, display and then Derwent was a silver sponsor so they probably had the second biggest display but there were also like Jelly Arts was there, Gel Press, I love gel printing so I was really, I really wanted to see what they were, what they were doing in their booth because <clears throat> I love to gel print. They weren't doing making takes but they had some um, like demos and products and stuff. Uh, Blick was doing some demos and, and this is all geared for like teachers. Amico was there, they had some really interesting ceramics on display they were really kind of fun and quirky. Uh, obviously, they weren't doing making takes because they would need like the kiln going and all of that. But um, there were like General's Pencil was there, Sergeant Art was there. So like companies that catered more to like um, school buys. So it was um, just really interesting because I'm kind of I've kind of been out of that like elementary age teaching for like my girls are 17 years old and I closed my studio when they were, when I was pregnant with them. So I've been out of like the kind of elementary level teaching stuff, except for stuff I did at the library for almost 17 years or almost 18 years. So it was interesting to kind of get reacquainted with what was popular, what was, you know, uh, what was going on with them. Cause like even the, the lesson plans I did for Derwent were more geared to some were, some were a little bit lower. They're going to, they're going to start rolling out on my YouTube channel over the next few months, but um, they were more geared to older, grades like uh, middle school and high school grades because the um, like the the Derwent products are a little bit pricier than like the younger elementary schools can afford a lot of times so the, the lesson plans were geared a little bit older so it was neat to kind of see what was being presented for the younger elementary students. Um, Dynasty Brush was there which I bought like Dynasty Brush for big uh, classes before so it was just really interesting to see all of that and it kind of also got me a little inspired. I want to call the librarian and see if she wants to do any more kids classes. I got to be mask free though. It's got to be when things have calmed down because I had you we had to have our masks on for that and um so I had my mask and I couldn't keep my glasses from fogging up and I'm not accustomed to wearing the masks. I wear them like uh where they're required, I'm fully vaccinated. Um, so I've made the choice, I'll wear them where they're required, like doctor's offices, if a store is requiring them, I'm not gonna be a jerk, I'll put them on, I'll go in. But um, I can't wear my glasses at the same time, so like go grocery shopping is really difficult because I couldn't read the uh, the like the labels and my diet is vegan, so I don't eat animal byproducts, so I wanna like read labels and also, you know, check out the nutri nutrition and whatnot. So that was a challenge, but I'm pretty much, you know, so I just pretty much bought the same old, same old all the time if I could, if they had it, because yeah, it was just, it's been a weird two years. And the other thing is that we, this is totally off topic, but I was watching the news this morning and they were saying it's two years to the day today when Maine had their first COVID positive case. And I'm just thinking it's only been two years. It feels like it's been forever. But anyway, the, so the mask mandate was still in effect in New York. You had to wear your mask everywhere. And... Uh, so my glasses were fogging up, so I was teaching without my glasses, and I had a splitting headache. And uh, this angel, absolute angel, elementary teacher from the Bronx had glasses anti-fog spray, and she sprayed my glasses and buffed them out and saved my bacon for the next two days because they didn't, they, the, the glasses spray stayed for the next two days, and it made all the difference in the world. The third day, I actually had, I was only teaching for about um, maybe like, an hour and a half, two hours before I had to leave to go catch a plane and my, the, spray, the spray was pretty much worn off by then and I could see my headache was coming back already uh, by the time I had to leave just from the, um, from the 
just the fogging up and having to take my glasses off. So that, I mean, an absolute angel. And I know some of you guys have recommended the anti-fog spray and I just never bothered to buy it because um, I don't need to wear a wet mask at home and I hadn't been teaching in public or anything other than like I did, I did like a Christmas thing at the library, Christmas uh, craft, but, and I think I've maybe done, I've just done a couple things. Um, and I just kind of like, you know, forgot about it, but man, that was a lifesaver. If I can, if I can remember, I think I took a photo of it. I'll have to look. I think I took a photo of it. Um, uh, I've got so many photos on there. I don't know if I'll find it, but I'll see if I can find it. And if so, I'll link it. But hopefully, we're done with the masks. Oh my word. Um, obviously, I'm gonna wear them where they need to be, where they need to be worn. But I miss seeing people's faces. I miss smiles, and um, I miss people. It was a little bit of like, you know culture shock going from like alone in my basement for two years to thousands of people oh my word but uh, it was good it was good Derwin had some like really good goodie bags for people they were giving away a set of 12 ink tense pencils and a set of 24 chroma flow pencils in some of the goodie bags some of the other goodie bags I think had like the line maker pens which are really nice permanent under alcohol marker and under watercolor products uh pens and they were giving those with the line maker I mean the line and wash set for some, and so they had some really high value goodie bags for people, and uh, they went through a thousand of those, and they were still there. I mean, there were more people than that because more people came through, and uh, they had already run out. So, yeah, it was it was pretty busy. I guess it's not as busy as it had been in the past. I guess typically they have like seven thousand people pre-register for the convention, and then people come in on the day of and register. And I think they had like twenty five hundred pre-register and that I don't know how many people came because there were some there were some people that were local that didn't you know they would just come and register day of I guess but it was um it was a lot of fun and it was my first well aside from like stamping conventions it was my first like trade show working a trade show experience and it went really well and um I would do it again if I was asked I don't know if they'll ask me back they seem to be pretty pleased with um with how everything went so I would say yes if they asked again or if I mean if another company did that was that I could stand behind but uh, you know it was fun I enjoyed it and uh, I see how much work it is now and so I'm no longer going to feel jealous when I watch like um, you know I've watched the old CHA and creativation videos I'm like oh that looks like so much fun to work at the that's work man <laughs> And now I know, now I know. It's like, now I'm thinking, thank you so much for bringing these videos so I can be lazy on my butt and my jammies at home and I can watch them. Because <laughs> really, I think you see more uh, on YouTube when you're watching these convention videos than you probably do there because it's just like, you know, especially if people get to go early and get videos before it opens because, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Um, I don't think I could have seen as much as I did as quickly as we did if I was walking around when the show was open, going beforehand, you know, you wouldn't have to wait behind people or anything. It was just really, it was really nice. Um, so yeah, New York, driving is crazy. I didn't drive, but riding in, you just have to not look, I found. Um, it was kind of neat, though, being driven around because, like, at night, you could, like, we drove uh, by Times Square, and it was, like, all lit up and really pretty and magical, and... Um, that, I mean, if you were driving, I think you'd be too, like, horrified to take your eyes off the cars around you to, like, look at anything. But uh, it was it was cool. Oh, so we went in. Oh, was this other fun thing. So the teacher that I taught with, we were all going to go out to dinner with the Derwent team after the second day of teaching. And he lived in Brooklyn. He's like, I don't want to take the subway back. That's like an hour and 15 minutes and then come back. And I'm like, well, do you... I go, do you want to like check out a museum or maybe he asked me. I can't remember. But he wanted to go to the Met. But that was like a subway ride. And then we had to be back in, like... A, like an hour and a half and it's like he's like oh we'd have 25 minutes to look around and I'm like I'm from Maine I can't do anything in 25 minutes you know I can't look at anything for 20 you know it's like I need time so I'm like well the Museum of, the, of Modern Art is right down the street is that any good because I'm like I don't know I'm like is that any good he's like it's like yeah we can go check that out he's totally playing it cool and he's like let's go to the top floor and work our way down and uh so we went to the top floor and I'm like I don't know what to expect and I'm like walking around it's like that's a that's a Picasso I'm like and, and so he's like totally playing it cool, like not saying anything we're going to see. And then I've turned a corner and honest to God, there is the honest to God Van Gogh Starry Night just on the wall, just mind its own business on the wall. Like, like it's not one of the most famous paintings in the whole entire world with just like a little wire on the floor. I mean, like people could touch it. I mean, you'd get hauled away by security. Surely they frown upon that. But it was like right there. I'm like, 
I didn't even believe it. I'm like, is this like, is this the real one or is this just like a print they hung out? I'm like, I'm like, is that the real one? He's like, yeah, that's the real one. I'm like, no way. And walked into a room and it was just a Monet water lily room. It just had like a triptych of water lilies and a single water, like huge canvas of water lilies. It's like, holy crap, it's right here. And I was like, I, it was like, it was like being in a room of famous people. I was just like, Oh my word! And like they, Andy Warhol's soup cans were all frayed up. I posted some of the. I did take a few pictures and posted them on Instagram. But honestly, I didn't take many pictures because I was too, like, gobsmacked. I was just like sucking, soaking it all in. It's like I don't want to be taking pictures. I'm too busy looking at everything. I can't be taking pictures. Like turn around, George O'Keefe right there on the wall. You know, like nobody's business. Like, like yeah, la di da. Here I am, George O'Keefe, and he's hanging on the wall. Like you know, ain't no big thing. You know, you're in New York City. Ain't no big thing. Like, Calder. Um, a Calder, a mobile right there. Yep, nothing, nothing to. <laughs> I was just like, oh, every day, la di da. Here I am, famous painting hanging the wall. Jackson Pollock, the real big one. Uh, I'm not a huge Pollock fan, but uh, still, it was cool to see it. You know, because you've seen it in books forever. Um, so much. I can't even like, I, I can't even uh, say it all because it's just like. So, oh, a Marc Chagall. And I have seen some of Marc Chagall's work before because uh, when my husband and I were in Hawaii, we took our honeymoon in Hawaii, there was this, it was weird, there's this little gallery. Um, I think it was in, I can't remember if it was in Maui or, uh, yeah, I think it was. I don't think it was, was it in like a really metropolis area? It wasn't in Honolulu. I think it was in like, in Maui somewhere. And there was like this just this evening where everything was open and we just strolled in and there were like all these Marc Chagall watercolors and drawings hanging up and it was just amazing I love Marc Chagall and uh, I was talking to the gallery owner and they just happened to have like I, I don't think it was always there and they gave me the catalog uh, I still have it it was just it was just crazy that just like you just wa wandered in you know I probably had uh, a bathing suit and a sarong on, you know, because it was just like, you know, uh, you know, Aloha lifestyle, baby. Love that. Uh, that's a place I would not mind revisiting and spending a long amount of time. Not so much Honolulu, no offense, but like, yeah, Maui, just like beachy. I'm a beach person. I am like a, I am, I am definitely more of a, <laughs> I am more of a laid back, uh, which probably doesn't, you probably seem, think I seem kind of high stressed and like wound up, but I'm actually more of a, like a laid back. Like I like that sort of thing. I like just chilling out and, you know, having the warm ocean, Pacific Ocean breezes. It's been a long time. Yeah, I like being outside when the weather is nice and just lazing around. Uh, so anyway, um, I got to see an oil painting of Marc Chagall's and I don't think, I think it was all like works on paper that I had seen in Hawaii. So that was really interesting. And it was one of those famous ones with the big horse head and the big green head. I can't remember what it's called, but, um, but you know the one I'm talking about. Uh, it's like, I gotta get my sister Wendy's book. I'm just so, and I'm so uncouth, you know, I'm just so uncouth because I'm like, oh my word, famous person, famous painting. You know, like every time I see a famous, I'm like, look, oh, famous person, you know, he's just like, like, oh, look at the, oh, isn't she sweet? Just look at that girl from Maine, you know? <laughs> She's never seen a famous painting uh, in real life, so that was exciting. Oh, so something else I wanted to mention. So before I went to New York, I had to go and buy a pair of shoes because I hate shopping. I loathe it. Like, that's one thing. I, I don't know why I don't like shopping. I maybe did when I was a teenager, but I just, it's just like, oh, I gotta get in a car and I gotta drive to the store and then I've gotta try things on and I have to try on shoes. I do not buy shoes unless I've tried them on because I need things to be comfor comfortable. I don't want to buy something and have to return it. I just want it the right thing. I would want to buy one of them and or two because shoes, I don't buy one shoe, you buy a pair and have it good, especially sneakers. I'm very picky about sneakers because I walk three miles a day with a dog. I like to walk in the woods. I like shoes. I need shoes that are going to be durable. So all my sneakers are durable, but they look like I've walked through the woods. They're all muddy and gross, and I can't wear them to New York City where people are fancy. So especially if I'm going to be working. So I wanted a pair of shoes, and there's no way I'm wearing heels standing like all day long teaching art. So I'm like, I need something that is like sneakers, but don't necessarily look like sneakers. So I went to Marshall's and, um, cause I don't want to pay top dollar for shoes I'm going to wear for three days. Uh, but I got to have something that's durable and comfortable enough. And, uh, then they'll be, I'll probably just wear them around the house because they're comfortable. Uh, and they're just slip on and they look kind of, I, I was looking at ballet flats, but they don't have enough cushion. I need some like memory foam at least. And so I bought some memory foam black shoes. Unfortunately they had white soles, but they look fine. Cause I just wore like, I, I just basically, I'm like the lightest packer in the world. Everything I brought 
fit in a backpack. Just like a regular backpack, not like an oversized backpack, like a stick it in your overhead bin and like you have the smallest bag on the airplane backpack. And uh, so I had like two pairs of pants, like one charcoal, one black. I had like five shirts, all different like black, white, or all either black or gray or like black and white print, and a um, thin black hoodie. Uh, just kind of like it's fairly dressy, just like cardigan-y type thing with a hood. Anyway, uh, so I found some shoes. They're actually only like 25 bucks. They had memory foam. They're very comfortable. And while I was at Marshall's, I'm like, well, I'm just going to, I never shop. So why don't I just stroll around and see what they have, see what the stationary aisle has. Because I'm kind of a stationary junkie. If I'm going to shop for something <clears throat> for pleasure, it's going to be stationary or... Or, uh, or art supplies. I do enjoy shopping for those products, but other things, or books. I like shopping for books. But um, other stuff, it's just like, it's like pulling teeth. I just, meh. It's such a chore. I hate shopping. <laughs> so, um, so, and I hemmed and hawed over this purchase, this $10 purchase, but I bought it, and then, and it, it was this caddy. How cute is that? I couldn't resist it. They had some other designs, but I just love that. Just, I'm a sucker for studio organization, I guess. So I got that. It was $10. I put foam core pieces to like divide up each of the squares. And the reason I, well, I actually didn't know what I was going to buy it for. I'm like, that would be cute on my desk to hold things. I didn't, you know, see, this is why I don't shop because I am too, I will buy things without a real purpose. Things that I, like, I didn't know I needed that until I saw it in the store. Do I really need it if I didn't know I needed it until I saw it? So anyway, it came home with me. And then I was like, yesterday or a couple days ago, I was thinking, what am I going to put in this? And I'm like, you know, I'm always telling people to use their precious things. And when I was at the show, one of the sales people asked me, what's your favorite Derwent product? And I said, honestly, my favorite Derwent product is Derwent Light Fast Pencils, but I'm real precious with them because they're kind of expensive. So the product I use the most are the Derwent Chroma Flows um, because they're inexpensive and I don't feel bad if I use them up, which the Light Fast are available open stock. The Chroma Flows aren't available open stock at the moment. So I'm like, that's silly, because if I used up, like, the white pencil or a couple of the pencils in my Chroma Flow set, I have to buy a whole new set. But if I use up a white light fast, I can just buy that one pencil. So I'm like, I'm putting them out. I guess I was kind of <clears throat> afraid that if I took them out of my tins, I'd lose one and not know I lost one. But I'm like, am I curating a museum of art supplies or am I an artist? I guess that's debatable. But I'm like, I'm putting them out on my desk so I can reach for those. I love my decoration, my decoration pencils. I mean, I do grab them and use them, but I shut my favorites out because, like, I mean, like, here, I have my favorites. I have I have my Blick Studio and my Copics and my Prismacolors markers, and I can, and I mix and match them, and I use them all the time because they're out. You know, I don't usually go and grab a whole set unless I'm going to go upstairs in color or unless I want to, I'm doing a tutorial and I want to have everything the same so it's just easier for people to find, like, an inexpensive set, but, like, those are staying on my table so I can just grab them and use them. So... There you have it. I grew a little bit on my trip to New York, and I hope you enjoyed hearing about it. So anyway, I'll have all the information in the video description that I talked about, the coupon code, the uh, links and all that jazz, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this sat chat. I'm out of time, so thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!